One of the best resources I've found so far, or at least it gives you a description of what's required in the setup of a D-Star hotspot. If you're following the path that I'm doing using the uh, node adapter, um, is to look just rather than giving you the web address, just do a quick search for for setup node uh, sorry setup D-Star hotspot, uh, and then take the top option, uh, which you'll see there, uh, which will take you to the page that I'll keep referring backwards and forwards to here. And uh, hopefully that'll give you some direction and some insight as to what we're trying to achieve. Now let's just have a quick sticky book about and see what I've got in the box. <clears throat> um, this is obviously just, uh, you know, thank you for purchasing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it looks like it refers to you to the website that I've pointed out to you, which gives you some instruction on, on uh, how to set up the hotspot. A lot of that information that's available on that site looks like it's duplicated here. It talks about jumper settings, uh, firmware setup, etc., uh, etc. Et um, <clears throat> there's a license details there. Um, now this actually uses the Dutch Star firmware. Um, one of the options that Jim gave me, <clears throat> excuse me, through the setup process um, was to actually upload the firmware to the board um, as part of the the purchase process. Uh, that's not a standard offer, uh, but he said that they're doing it at this time, so whether that will continue if you to buy a board in the future, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's something you can request. Uh, and that was obviously something that I thought would save me a whole bunch of uh, hassle, or something that I wasn't overly confident in, so I absolutely you know, jumped at that offer. Uh, so thanks for that, Jim. Obviously looks like the uh, manual for the board there. Okay. Um, and obviously specs of the board, uh, showing you different details on it, uh, licensing instructions which I believe should have been taken care of by the firmware update by Jim, um, schematic for the actual uh, board itself, now I believe you can buy these boards from him in kit form. Um, now there's some adjustments required I believe to the output of the board, uh, the squelch setting etc and I think that's a little bit of fiddling. Um, Alright, <clears throat> so that's pretty much it as far as documentation goes. That gives me confidence that there's probably a dozen or so different pages there uh, which looks like lots of information. Information I think I've already garnered from the website um, and we've also got the board here. Um, Electrostatic bag. Let's try and go out and have a look. And there she is. There's the board itself. Now, as an ex-girlfriend once said to me, I knew it was going to be small, but I didn't think it was going to be quite this small. All right, here we go. Compared to an Android phone, um, that gives you some sort of idea or scope of the size. So probably about half the size. Uh, if I turn it sideways. Probably going to be about the width. Now this is actually a Samsung Galaxy S3. So I'm going to say a little over a third uh, in depth and just as wide. And obviously that's only as high as point is actually the uh, the ports there. <coughs> so I've got an uh, SRS 232 uh, port there and also a USB adapter there. <coughs> now that goes to the PC. Uh, this goes to your radio, you can try your radio uh, and obviously the appropriate cable goes over the radio and I think it's a six pin plugs into the data port of the radio uh, and I also grab just the, the USB cable as well. Uh, look these are really sort of uh, insignificant costs, uh, I think it was, uh, there you go, $15 for this cable here. Uh, and three bucks for the USB one. Now, chances are you've probably got one of these in the cupboard, and chances are I've got it in the scrap PC box there as well. Uh, but I thought, look, I might as well just grab these specifically, and I know when it turns up, <coughs> I'm good to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is switch off, just have a quick reading of instructions, and then we're going to try and set it up and um, see where we go from there. <coughs> now, as far as this size goes, I know some of the guys, or I believe I've uh, seen it on the web, where they've actually stuck these in an Altoid tin, and it fits in an Altoid tin. I don't believe there's any requirement to have the box be RF shielded, uh, so I don't think you need to go with a, a metal box of any description. I think I'm just going to go with a plastic one. Obviously, it's going to be easier to deal with. Uh, but I will take this down to JCar and the like and just have a look and see what sort of boxes they've got there. <coughs> um, keeping in mind that this obviously has to be exposed. 
Now, there are some LEDs up in the corner here. So I imagine any project box that I stick this in, um, I'm going to want to be able to see those. Um, I'm not real sure at this point what they will be displaying. So maybe if I could um, pick up possibly a clear uh, project box, that might be the way to go. So I can actually see those LEDs going. Uh, I believe they will actually <coughs> show up when there's sort of a, you know, a connection transmitting, etc., etc. Uh, now I believe there's a couple of pots. Uh, you'll see a couple here at this end, uh, and another one here at this end. So they're variable. So, uh, and I think, like I said, I think one something to do with squelch. Uh, and I'm guessing off the top of my head at this point without looking at the schematic I think one is receive uh, and one is transmit so we'll have a look at that when we get into it I think there may be some fine adjustment and depending I think you know, I believe also um, these may require some small amount adjustment through the setup phase and I think that also depends on the radio that you've been setting it up with like that you're actually using uh, as your controller or well, from this instance, I'm going to be using the 91AD. Um, I believe some people have been using 31, the Icon 31, uh, the new HT, uh, or possibly the 51, but I believe they're a little bit finicky um, <clears throat> and and may require some additional changes. So if you're having uh, an issue with an Icon 31AD, I think they are, uh, or possibly the 51, get in touch with Jim. Uh, because I believe there's some adjustments that can be made to the board to make it a bit more successful. Uh, alternatively, I think there has been suggestions saying <clears throat> to use another radio other than, if, if it's available to you, other than the uh, the 31. Again, that's just something I've picked up off, uh, you know, just doing some research. Uh, take it for what it's worth, but if you encounter the problem, uh, get in touch with Jim and um, see if he's got some solutions there for you, because I believe you may have heard of it before. So that's pretty much it as far as the board goes. Um, not a lot to tell. Uh, now I'm certainly not good on electronics. Um, can't tell you what half of these things are or what they're going to do. 